morning, everyone. Hope you've had a great week so far. Tonight we move into Matthew chapter 7. We find ourselves in one of the most misinterpreted and um, often taken out of context verses in all of the scriptures. And it is in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 to 6. Let's read it together. Judge not that you will not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw pearls before pigs, lest they trample them under their foot and attack you. As I mentioned, this is perhaps the most uh, quoted verse in the scriptures out of context. It is often used in the the context of someone saying to another, um, you have no right to tell me that I am wrong. How dare you say that I am wrong? Doesn't the Bible say judge not um, or do not judge? And the Bible does right here um, in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. Judge not that you will not be judged. And if you just take that one verse and you just suck it straight out of the context, um, well then you can make it say whatever you want to say. But the question that I would want to put before us tonight is, is that interpretation the correct interpretation? I believe that we can easily say, no, it is not the correct interpretation. The Bible does call us to judge but it calls us to judge rightly the bible doesn't contradict itself in laying and and giving directions to the judges to the magistrates throughout the law in the old testament in fact there's a book in the in the bible called judges god is a god who judges and god is a god who calls us as his people to judge rightly and so In this passage, it is not saying, judge not, have no judgment at all. We have no right to have any discernment and to to call out what is wrong and to call out what is right. To prove that within the very context of the sermon, in the sermon, we see in verse 6 of this exact paragraph, Jesus saying to his disciples, do not give to the dogs what is holy, do not throw pearls before pigs. This is his disciples calling his disciples to show discernment and to show right judgment. He will carry on later on and talk in verse 15 onwards about false prophets and say, beware of false prophets. And how can we be be aware of false prophets if we are not showing right judgment and right discernment? And so we live in a world that would teach and believe that truth is subjective, meaning that um, one person's truth is is their truth, and I have no right to to say what is absolute moral truth. But the Bible would teach that truth is not subjective, but it is objective. There is an absolute truth that God holds and God is the judge of, and he calls us as his people to hold to that holiness standard, the righteousness standard. And so because truth is objective, I think the best verse that can help us understand Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 is seen in John 7 verse 24. And John 7 verse 24 says this, Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. I'll read that again because this, this I think helps us understand what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 7 and its fullness. Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. And so when Jesus would say to his disciples, do not judge lest you be judged. And for the same judgment that you pronounce, it will be, it will be used against you. Jesus is saying this, there are different kinds of judgment. And as Christians, as his disciples, as his followers, we are to exercise biblical judgment and to stay away from the worldly judgment. And so if I may just mention four kinds of wrong judgment. Firstly, there is a judgment that is based on appearance that is wrong. This is when we would pass judgment just based on how someone would look to us. We see this in the Bible in Luke chapter 7 verse 36 to 50 where the Pharisee passed judgment on the on the on the woman based on her appearance and her reputation. 
The second kind of judgment that is wrong is the judgment of judging with harshness and with no and with no gentle mercy. I believe that this is what verse 2 is in reference to. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. D.A. Carson helps us understand this, where he says this, We should abolish judgmental attitudes, lest we ourselves stand utterly condemned before God. A judgmental attitude excludes us from God's pardon, for it betrays an unbroken spirit. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 shows us where it says this, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. For if you forgive men when they have sinned against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, as we read in, in Matthew 6 verse 14. And so what we see here is that we are not to have judgmental hearts, that we are walking around with critical hearts of other people. The third kind of wrong judgment is the judgment of hypocrisy. And Jesus would illustrate this through verses 3 to 5, where he would say, Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice that the log that is in your own eye? Or how do you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your own eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And so this is the hypocrisy judgment that would say, there is sin in other people's lives, but ignore the own, your own sin in your life. Jesus is saying, this, first go and clean your own house before you would stand and call out other people's sin on theirs. Does this mean that only the perfect can speak out? No, absolutely not. That is not what Jesus is saying here. But he is calling out the heart of among the teachers of the law at the time, who knew that there was sin in their heart, but they were unrepentant of it, but were willing to call out other people's outward sin. For as he says at the end of verse 5 here, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. You see, the whole point here is that Christians are to come alongside one another, brother to brother, sister to sister, and help each other to grow in holiness. You see, verse 5b shows us the fullness of what is meant here. Right judgment doesn't place condemnation on one another, but right judgment helps us grow in holiness. I'll say that again. Right judgment doesn't place condemnation, but right judgment helps us grow in holiness. A fourth kind of judgment that is wrong is judgment that comes through the form of slander and gossip. And we are to guard against this in the way that we would talk about other people. Are we talking about them in a way that is killing their their character as we spoke about in Matthew chapter 5 where we spoke about murder? And so as we've looked at so far, we've seen that when Jesus says, judge not, he is not making a blanket statement about judgment, but he is calling us to judge rightly, judge with discernment. And then he comes to verse 6, which helps us understand how we are to judge. We are to judge with discernment. Do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and attack you. Throughout the scriptures, the reference to dogs and pigs is a reference to to that which is dirty. Um, and, he, and he would use this in reference to those that would ridicule and reject the gospel of Christ. He's saying this, call out sin where you see it. Do not stand down when it comes to the pursuit of holiness, but do not be surprised when those that would ridicule and reject the gospel would rise up against you. And there comes a point where, biblically speaking, we dust, we, we wipe the dust from our feet and we move on. We are never to be ashamed from preaching the gospel, but we are to use discernment with those who would be antagonistic against it and those where that would hate the work of Christ. And so how do we do this? This requires much discernment. This requires much leading of the Spirit. But my prayer for us is that 
we would walk in wisdom in this. That we would walk in love for one another. Helping one another grow in holiness as we would lovingly come alongside one another. Calling out sin where it needs to be called out. Correction where it needs to be called out. But also at the same time doing so in a loving, gentle way. For we are called throughout the scriptures to show mercy, to have gentleness towards one another. And so may the Lord help us as we would walk in this tension. May the Lord help us as we would pursue holiness and true righteousness. God bless everyone.